Okay, so for those who have joined us in session one, welcome back. All right, so for a, for session two, we'll be moving on to problem sums toolbox series part two. All right, so the first two e classes are actually made available to the public because I want everybody to have a preview of what is an e class. Right, I'm sure many of you are already very used to learning online. You, your kids, for example, you, you know, if I'm talking to students out there, I know you watch videos, you learn through different platforms online, right? So, the very good thing about learning online, right, is the fact that you have access to knowledge and learning at any time, all right? So, that's the reason why I've put myself behind this project. Uh, called Dr. Zam's Math E classes because I believe that knowledge should be freely available. Alright, so this is my intention and that is I want everybody to have access to knowledge which can really help you do well in your PSLE math. So for those who are in primary 5, you can also join us. Alright, for those who are primary 6, your prelims are around the corner. I know many of you are very concerned. Uh, I know students who are not doing well in math. Uh, so what I have done here is I've come out with a very interesting or rather very effective and uh, very effective and proven to bring in results. All right, so do go to my website, drzam.com slash revision series 2018. Take a look at the schedule of classes, e-classes that I have. Uh, for today, we are continuing on with Problem Sums Toolbox series. In the next four weeks, we are also going to go on with the Problem Sums Toolbox series. So the thing about problem solving or problem sums, you will have different tools, right? You need to use different tools, different pro uh, problem sum strategies, and then you need to learn how to use them. All right, so in this part two, we're gonna take a look at transfers concepts. All right, so transfers concepts basically are uh, when amounts are being transferred around, you know, either very uh, internal transfer, meaning amongst themselves, or external transfers, meaning from outside, you know, uh, externally being transferred so either from outside they gain more or they give away all right so we're going to take a look at four transfers concepts and i'm going to tell you the strategies to use these concepts all right so there are four so the first one is unchanged quantity so unchanged quantity is when one of the object or one of the subject or the the person that is being mentioned in the question does not change the quantity right so what happened here is the rest actually change or one or two do not change right so that means the quantity at the end of something did not change for unchanged difference is the difference between whatever is being compared did not change right and then unchanged total is the total after whatever transfer external transfer the total amount remains the same right and finally the most difficult one would be change quantities so change quantities means everything seems to change right so if you notice by now transfers concepts actually uses a uh, actually uses uh, a very common heuristics all right very common problem solving tool which is called the before and after concept right so before and after so transfer concepts are typically used in situations where there's a before and there's an after right because transfers involve before and after all right so without further ado, let's move into today's class, today's uh, session in proper. So like I mentioned to you all the other day, uh, I want to cover all the non-routine methods because these are the methods that when you learn, you can improve by 10 marks, guaranteed. Right? So make sure you really know all these problem sum strategies, understand these tools, okay? Understand these problem sum tools, how to use them. Right? Because the questions will change But when you know how to use them And you know for what purpose you use them You know how to select your problem sum strategies you, do, you will do very well Because the math concepts being tested here The math concepts which are being tested here Are actually very small numbers They are involving fractions Involving very small whole numbers Involving money Involving ratio Whole numbers So these numbers are actually very small What, what is the main problem of a lot of students Is problem solving They do not know how to solve problems They don't understand Right, so that's why I decided to start off with non-routine methods because non-routine methods most of the time, not many schools cover them, all right, and not many tuition centers cover them, or you've never learned it. That's why they are called non-routine methods, all right. So for today, like I mentioned to you, I'm going to focus on transfers concepts under non-routine methods. So if you notice there, there's a picture, right? There's a picture of a rabbit, 
being taken out of a magician's head. All right, and then the words show it, right? So when you use transfers concepts, it is always very good to make a visual representation of the problem. So when you make the problem visual, right? Let's say you draw it, you know, you can draw a model, you write it out, you draw a diagram, doesn't matter, make a list. When you make problems become very visual to you, your brain happens to love it, right? Your brain happens to make you understand things better. So it's always good to show it. So for this transfer concepts, I'm going to use very simple method, which you have learned since primary two and primary three, which is model drawing. And then I'm going to also use units method. Okay, units method basically, you know, is combining the model with units, you know, just converting things into units so that you can understand everything is in terms of units. All right. So in a way, it's called unit modeling. You combine models plus units. All right. So you need to get your models right, your units right. So you need to draw a model in this case. All right. Then the other thing uh, about such non-routine methods, the one that I'm going to cover today, the transverse concepts is actually belonging to a category of heuristics which is called going through the process so it's a step-by-step -step process right so it's like something is happening then after that another thing is happening then after that another thing is happening so these kind of questions involve step-by-step -step kind of processes right so for step uh, by step kind of processes we have different heuristics so one of the heuristics which are being used when things are in a process okay like i mentioned to you just now is a before and after concept Right, so it's just like the butterfly, right? So before you have a butterfly, you know, you have the caterpillar, and then before the caterpillar, of course, you have the egg, you have the pupa, and so on, right? So it's the same thing for math. So for example, these kind of questions, transfer concepts involve you uh, looking at things before and after, and be, being very clear about what is the before and what is the after. All right, so for today, these are the four concepts, transfers concepts that are going to involve all these heuristics which you are very used to. So we're going to apply all of them. <coughs> Alright, so the first concept is called external transfer with unchanged quantity. All right, the second one is internal transfer with unchanged total concept. The third one is external transfer with unchanged difference. And the fourth one is external transfer with changed quantities. All right, so if you notice here, basically everything is external transfer. That means you are transferring a certain amount externally, either bringing in uh, more or giving away. And internal transfer me within themselves, right? They are transferring amongst themselves. That's why the total do not change. So these are the four concepts that I'm going to go through today. And as per normal, today is not about practice. Today is about fully understanding the concepts, fully understanding the problem sum strategies, knowing exactly what it is, being very crystal clear about what to do and how to do and when you are going to use all the problem sum strategies. So I'm not going to give you so many questions. Okay, so today we are just going to do one question per concept. All right, so what's important here is you need to know how to do it. All right, <clears throat> so let's move on. Okay, so what's going to happen here is, uh, I hope you all have signed up for the newsletter. Right, you can just go to drzam.com slash newsletter. You can download the GWS with Dr. Zam's Kiss Checklist. That is the method, the general method that we are using for this purpose. Okay, so make sure you download the GWS with Dr. Zam's Kiss Checklist. Alright, so you will know what's GWS method that I'm going to use here. And then make sure for those who are taking PSLE, download also the welcome gift. So when you sign up for the newsletter, you'll get these two booklets together. Okay, so when you download the PSA Math Mastery Checklist, you will be sure you know what is going to come out in your mastery uh, checklist. Alright, so I just want to recap again. What are non-routine questions? Okay, non-routine means questions which students are not very familiar, right? You're not very familiar. So these are the questions which are normally considered difficult, right? So these are the questions which normally will be about 20 to 35 marks, 20 to 30 marks of the paper. Right, so these are the questions which are non-routine. So they expect you to really think hard about it, right? So you need to figure out different kind of solutions, 
Alright, so that means the knowledge and the skills that you require to do non-routine methods must be there. Alright, so by right, problem solving, if you notice, problem solving is more of not memorizing. You know, I know some students, they memorize the steps. You don't memorize steps. You need to have a certain way of solving problems. Alright, and then figure out all the tools. Right, so that's why in this uh, series, which is called the Problem Sums Toolbox Part 2, I just want to give you all the tools, okay? I want to give you all the tools inside the toolbox and then I want you to learn what are all these tools for and use them in different combination or use them correctly because that is more important, right? I don't want you to memorize how to use the tools. I want you to know what are the tools and be very confident about using them, all right? So that's why just now I mentioned to you, you need to sign up for the newsletter to download the welcome gift. So when you download the welcome gift, you'll get the keys checklist, Dr. Zam keys checklist, and then you will also know how to do the GWS method. Alright, so GWS method basically is a flow. You are you start with givens, then you, you will know what is the solution they want. So you get the final solution by coming out with the workings. Okay, so you will use this being assisted by the keys checklist. Alright, so for you to do really well for non-routine questions, you must apply all concepts, you know, all the skills, all the mathematical processes, you know, the thinking skills, the heuristics, and all the methods that you've learned. Alright, so that's why I call it the math problem sum toolbox, because in this toolbox are all the things that you need. The more you know, the more tools you know how to use, you will definitely score A star. Right, so if you know all the tools to use and you have a certain way of thinking, you know, a math routine of thinking, which is under Dr. Zanki's checklist, you combine all of this, guess what? There is no problem that you cannot solve. Guaranteed. Alright? So stick stick uh stick with me and I'll make sure I'll take you all the way from now till PSLE and you will improve and do well. But you have to work hard, alright, and keep on uh, attending your e-classes if you are not available for e-classes make sure you go through the recorded e-class do the practice go through the worked out solutions and if you have questions always ask all right it's very important to ask all right now the very first method that i mentioned to you is called the external transfer unchanged quantity right so external transfer unchanged quantity so unchanged quantity here, when do you use? So what happened here is some problems actually involve the transfer of items, right, from one person, just from one person, and then the other person or people are not affected. So that means only one person, uh, the amount changes. So the before and after only for one person changes, whereas the rest, there's no change. Before, after remains the same. All right. So in such questions, like I mentioned to you, external transfer occurs. All right. So that means... There is no change occurring to other people, one or more people. There only one person get changed. All right. So, like I mentioned to you, I really, really want you to use models and units. All right. Because models and units are the easiest for you to solve problems. All right. I know some of you are like shortcuts and all that, which is good. But let me tell you this: those those students that can do shortcuts, they're the top ten percent. Right. So, if you're the top ten percent, I don't think you will need to even attend these e classes. You're already the top ten percent or the top 5%. But more, I'm more interested to help those who are struggling or those who are trying to score an A star, you are still at 80% and those who are failing. All right? Because those who are failing and, and things like that, the methods I'm going to cover with you will be very good methods for those who are even average, you know, like 60% all the way who are 80. Okay, I have students who score 80 over and then PSA score A star. Right, by learning these methods. And I also have students who are failing, who score U, who score D or E, and then after they get the B. Why? Simply because they learn all these methods and they apply, right? They apply the Dr. Zam's math, KISS checklist, Dr. Zam's uh, GWS method. So make sure you do all this, all right? So let's take a look at the worked example for this question. Now, before we go to the question, I just want to highlight to you, this is the Dr. Zam's KISS checklist. So it's always good to follow this case checklist. And on top of that, of course, we have the Dr. Zam's golden rules, right? So Dr. Zam golden rules are very simple. Read carefully. Don't miss out any words. Understand clearly. Annotate, analyze, right? Draw or visualize to understand. So it's very simple. It's actually part of the Dr. Zam case checklist. But I just want you to know these are golden rules to understand problem sums. All right. So let's take a look at the question. Okay. So... Remember the GWS method. GWS method is for you to look out for the givens. 
Alright, find out what are the given. So let me take my uh, digital chalk. Alright, so today I'm gonna use white because some of you commented that red is not that clear. Alright, so first things first, read carefully, understand clearly. So you need to really understand. To understand, you need to know what certain mathematical uh, words mean or when you combine math, you know, like for example, fraction, you combine fraction with English. What does it mean in the real world, right? And how do you represent it mathematically as a model or units or whatever form, right? So that is actually a skill that is required of you, All right? So let's start. So as you all know, the GWS method is to look out for givens, okay? Annotate and analyze, all right? So let's go. There were two third, all right? As many men as woman right so in this case i want to focus again on this many students cannot do fractions cannot do percentages cannot do ratio because simply because of this they do not know the part and whole concept okay the part and whole they do not know when you're talking about part like for example in this case you're talking about two-thirds of men Compared to who? Compared to the woman. So when you compare the part, so in this case, the man is the part, the whole is the woman, right? So when you're comparing part and whole, you need to know uh, the whole is always, the numerator, denominator will be the same, right? So in this case, if man is two third, right? And this is the part, woman will be three over three, right? So many students, they still do not get this. Alright, so if I'm going to say there were two-thirds as many men as women, it means woman is the whole that I'm, compa I'm comparing with the man. The man is actually the part. Right, so the man is actually two-thirds of the whole. So in this case, the whole is three out of three. Alright, and then the other thing is this. As you are reading this, straight away, you must tell yourself, how do I represent this mathematically? Right, let's say you're supposed to draw a model. So right away, in your head, you know, if woman is whole, and denominator is three, that means there must be three rectangles or three units when I draw the model for woman. And how many for men? Two, right? Because it's two-third. So two out of three is two-third when you compare with woman. All right, so men and woman are working in a factory. All right, so after, after, see? So that's why I told you before, after, right? So now what happens after? After four more women, four more women join the factory, there were three fifth as many men as women in the factory. All right, so that means there were three fifth as many men as women in the factory. So now what happened here when four women join? Okay, so the man is three and the woman is five, right? So in this case, like I mentioned to you, you must know that this case the woman here is the whole, the man here is the part, right. So find the number of workers in the factory at first. So you're supposed to find the total number of workers at first. Now, first things first. When you look at this, you must ask yourself what changed or what didn't change. So in this case, you know only the number of women actually change, right? The number of women actually changes. Why? Because four more women join. But before that, the number of women is the whole and then the man is two out of three. So, which is the unchanged quantity here? The unchanged quantity here is actually the male, right? The male do not change. So, <coughs> how do you do this? It's actually very simple. So, remember, it's a before, after question. So, you just write before, right? Then just draw the model. It's very simple. So, male, all right, we know that it is two units and then female, in this case, like I mentioned to you, it is the whole. So it is three units. All right. So you must get this model right. All right. Then you can do uh, the next one. So in this case, which one is the unchanged? Okay. Unchanged is male. All right. So you can write after. Okay. Keep the male. All right. Keep the male. And then make sure it is the same. So normally, I will use a dotted line. Okay, to guide me that it is the same number of male or men working in the factory. So I'll just do one whole block. I'm not going to cut it yet. <coughs> Alright. And then down here, they mentioned that four more women joined the factory. And now there were three fifth as many men. So now what happened to this unit? It becomes broken into three. Right. It becomes broken into three. So it's okay. We can just draw the dotted line first. 
Okay, it's broken into three. And what happened to the man? Okay, the man becomes the same, three. But in this case, the same size, but it's broken into three smaller units. Alright, later I'll tell you how to convert. So the next one, in this case, is female or woman. Alright, so in this case, will be woman. Okay, so woman, what happens? You need to create, alright, something slightly longer. Okay, so in this case, you need to create woman having five. Right, so one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so in this case, as you can see here, alright, there are three parts here. And two parts here, which means the same thing, right? It's the same thing. So how do you convert it such that both of them have the same uh, number? So normally what we do here is, we take a look at here, there are two parts here. And there are three parts here, right? So we find the common multiple. So the lowest common multiple is six. So we take the male as six units, okay? So for after, it remains the same, also six units. Right, so in this case, if we say both of them have six units, so each of these small units is three, right? So it's three units each. So if this is three units each, and this is also three units, and three units, and three units, right? So that means woman at first is nine units, all right? Now, if this is six units, that means the smaller unit here is two U, two U, and two U. Alright, and down here for this woman, they have 5 units. So all you have to do is just put 10 U. Right, so 5 times 2, so it's 10 U. Alright, so now it becomes very easy. Now, from 9 units to 10 units, right, what happened? 4 women join. Right, so 4 women join. So when this 4 women join, there is an increase to 10 units, right? So that means one unit one unit is four, right? One unit is four. It's as simple as that. So that means each of these unit is four, all right? So find the number of workers in the factory at first. It's very easy, right? So one unit in this case is four. So now you need to find the number of workers in the factory at first. So total, just take a look at here. There's six units here and nine units here. So total is 15 units, right? All right, so very simple math, four times 15. Like in the previous video, I did mention, if you don't want to make careless mistake, just use your calculator to confirm, all right? But in this case, I'm pretty sure 4 times 15, the answer is 60. Alright, but if not, just use the calculator because sometimes you do not know. You might be, you know, distracted for a short moment and then get the answer wrong. Alright, so how many workers are there in the factory at first? There are, okay, there are 60, 60 workers. Okay, so this is one way of doing it, right? So I keep on repeating to all of you, the best way, there is no best way to do a certain problem sum. The best way to tell the truth is the way you can get it in the shortest amount of time and get it right. That is the best way. And every child or every student has different ways of doing things. So don't force yourself just because you feel that, oh, I'm, I'm just scoring 50%. The person who's scoring A star is doing it this way, so I must learn his method. No. What you need to do is just learn the methods, okay, the problem sum strategies that you can use easily and solve as many problems as you can. Alright, so I repeat again, okay. When you have the Dr. Zam's math problem sums toolbox, you're actually combining all the heuristics, you're combining all the non-routine methods together. And then after that, you will learn how to select the different problem sum strategies to help you. Alright, that is more important. Alright, so this is some this is to me the easiest way 
to do things so if you notice once you know how to do this it takes you less than five minutes so typically this kind of question will be about four minutes four marks maximum all right and i just want to let you know workings okay for this kind of question you are given marks for workings so this final answer is one mark all right this final answer is one mark this one probably is another one mark and then the rest is two marks right the rest will be around two marks so it's important for you to take note you know where the marks come from and all that so that when you make careless mistake you don't have to worry you still have the workings but the best is do not make careless mistakes all right now let's move on to the next transfer concept and that is the internal transfer concept which is the unchanged total that means the total of a group of persons or people do not change okay so when do you use unchanged total concept so you use this concept based on the fact that total quantity is unchanged right so the transfer takes place between two or more people internally all right so they they just shift the thing around so basically it's like shifting things around there's no transfer externally or any new things coming into the system so internally is the same it's just that they shift the numbers around so that's why the total quantity is unchanged all right so again i recommend you to use models and units as much as you can all right because models have certain limitations you know i've seen students who try to break one unit up into 20 pieces all right so it doesn't make sense so that's why it's always good to use model to guide you to guide you visually and then convert it to units so that you can work everything out based on units all right so use a model to guide you so that you can understand how to do your problem and then use the units to help you mathematically right to help you cope with the numbers mathematically so that you have to you don't have to keep on cutting down your model all right so again dr sam's keys checklist uh, let me just uh, since i have this keys checklist i just want to let you know for those who are joining us let me just use rate for this purpose so that you all can see so as you can see problem sums is not just about solving problem you know uh, everybody can solve problems if given a lot of time so that's why you are given the amount of time you know in a very limited time uh, for example if you are taking standard math you know paper one paper two you have a certain duration and then you're supposed to finish all these problems within the time given right so that's why it's very important to do your exam smart check that is to check time manage time all right many students that i know they like to leave things blank and then they say i don't i don't have enough time to finish all right so it is very critical for you to be able to do your work fast and at the same time you do not make careless mistakes all right that's very important so that's why dr zamki's checklist also includes exam smart consideration all right because like i mentioned down here what we want is we want to create a math brain so when you create a math brain especially when you are applying that math brain in exam context you need to take note of the time remaining all right then the next thing is like i mentioned read annotate analyze okay annotate means you scribble down form links such that you analyze and understand when you analyze me you look at the parts and look at how they relate to one another all right and visualize to understand so you try to form pictures the problem form pictures in your head or like a movie it, and then you can draw to understand so i would advise you to draw to understand i know some students who are the high end five percent they don't have to draw but the problem with such students is they sometimes make careless mistakes right because they don't even draw so when you don't draw you tend to be quite confused with certain steps right but i'm not saying there are students who don't have to draw and score full marks there are students who don't have to draw and yet they score full marks all right because they're actually drawing in their head and they think differently all right then next thing is of course know which concepts and then you know which one to apply know which skills which heuristics so you know what's the best method and then figure out which non-routine method so in this example that i'm going to go through it will be a non-routine method which i simply call unchanged total concept or if you want to think uh, further you can say internal transfer unchanged concept okay unchanged total concept all right so once you go through understanding analyzing then you start doing your planning and writing so you need to ask yourself what are the givens what is the solution all right and then you must plan the steps what are the steps you want to take to do all right and then after that you start doing you draw diagram model list start writing drawing the steps you know and the workings and then work out your steps work out your steps either mental sum or calculator i would advise you be let the calculator be your best friend okay calculator is allowed in paper two of your psle and in most exams if you're primary five you can use calculator so let the calculator be your best friend it's a tool it's a mathematical tool use it okay some of us make careless mistake why do you want to lose marks one mark two mark when the same you already have a calculator right 
So just use your calculator and just type, you know, just key in faster. Alright, I know some students they can do mental sum faster than the keying in, right? But the problem with mental sum is you might make mistakes. And also some students they can even key in the wrong numbers. Then they get the wrong answer. So you must be very careful, you must be very focused, alright, and at the same time you must take note of the time left. Alright, so as you are doing this, work out the steps, you must derive the final answer. Right? So if you use the GWS method, you know that you are given and you know what is the solution that you want. Then you have to work out the workings. All right. So once you derive the final answer, of course, you have to check your answer. Check your answer whether your answers are correct. All right. If you decide to skip, put a circle or put an asterisk and then tell yourself, are we going to spend more time on this question or not? Right, because for different questions have different marks. So you need to tell yourself, are you going to spend more time on this question? If you're going to spend more time on the question, then quickly spend more time. If not, you cannot be spending half an hour on one question. Right, you have to make that decision, and then you need to check your answer in each step. Because depending on how many workings you have, how many steps you have, you need to check every step that all the numbers tally up. All right, and then you need to confirm the final answer is correct. How do you confirm the final answer is correct? You substitute your final answer back into the question. All right, so for different questions, have different way of checking. Alright, so you need to know. And then again, exam smart, you know, you need to check time, manage time, and then go through questions which are not done. So all this is Dr. Zamki's checklist, which we make it become a math mental routine, such that when you have problem, this is how you think. So for beginners, of course, this list will take some time, you know. But once you convert this list into the way your math uh, brain works, and you keep on making it a routine, guess what? You get better and better at it and your brain will be able to solve things very quickly because there's certain way of solving problems. Alright, now, for unchanged total concept, like just now I mentioned to you, this is the question that we're going to go through. Alright, so the unchanged total concept, the total do not change, okay? It does not change. Alright, so this question that we're going to take a look at will be about marbles, alright? Will be uh, pertaining about marbles, so it's about total unchanged uh, a number about marble. So let's go through Dr. Zam's uh, golden rules. So the golden rule is very simple, right? <coughs> read carefully. So some students, they don't even read carefully. Okay, <coughs> let me change the uh, the pen back to white color. Okay, see the good thing about, uh, about using digital chalk is it's unlimited and I save the environment. Right, I can choose color. Alright, so let's continue on. There were a total of 180 marbles. So total 180 marbles. Remember, this is a given. So a given is the total is 180 marbles and in two containers. So these 180 marbles are found in two containers. What are the containers? A glass jar and a tin can. So these two, two containers, one is a glass jar, another one is a tin can. Alright. Okay, after 47, after, see, after, you know, when there's an after, you know, there's a before and after. So after 47 marbles were transferred from the glass to the tin can, okay, what happened? There were twice as many marbles in the tin than in the glass jar. So there were twice in the tin than in the glass jar, and this is after. So right away, you know, after it means the tin has twice, right? The marbles in the tin can has twice than the glass jar, right? So these are all the givens. So here is your first given, the total. This is your second given, the amount of marbles that were transferred. And this is your third given, all right? What happened once you do this transfer, all right? How many marbles are there in each container at first, all right? So that is the solution that they want. How many marbles are there in each container so you're supposed to say how many marbles are in the glass jar how many marbles are in the tin can all right so for this concept you must know that it is unchanged total concept unchanged total concept means even after the transfer total will always be 180 marbles right so you need to know for this situation the total are uh, the total marbles is not changed so this kind of question whereby you have certain kind of transfer internal transfer and then the total do not change, they are called the unchanged total concept kind of non-routine problem sum. Alright, so again, you know this uh, uses uh, heuristics before after, so let's write before. Alright, so before is... Alright, so for this before, if you notice, in this case, not much is being mentioned about before. So normally what I'll do here is, I'll just skip the before 
and then I'll put the after first alright <coughs> so I will draw the before later okay I can work backwards so there's another heuristic called work backwards alright so that's why like I mentioned to you sometimes you can use different heuristics right is this the only way to solve the problem the answer is no this is not the only way right I just want to use the way which I feel most students are able to understand and easily do all right so in this case we know that they say here twice as many marbles in the tin all right so that means the tin will have two units all right and then the glass will only have one unit all right that's the first that's the third given so I'm working backwards as you can see right I'm working backwards it's okay you can work backwards you can use any heuristics you want and then what's the other given total will always be 180 right so right away from here it's actually pretty easy so one of these how many 60 isn't it so 180 divided by three units each of them is 60 all right this is called the derived given just based on drawing this out and you know the total is 180 before and after is still 180 you can already know one of these is 60 all right so one of these is 60 so if you read down here after 47 marbles were transferred from the glass so down here actually what happened here is there is 47 down here which is being transferred here right so down here there is actually 47 here all right so essentially what happened here is if you work backwards basically the glass all right started out with 60 and then there's a 47 down here right there's a 47 and then there is a component here all right which is also 60 all right and then this part here how do you know what is this part is actually quite simple right this part here is actually here right it's actually 60 minus 47 okay so this part here is actually 13 right because these two must add up to 60 so this is what I mean by working backwards and you know again the total here is 180 right so by using by using, uh, you know, drawing a model by working backwards before and after and then manipulating your model, you know, mathematical reasoning, you know, use your brain to analyze and understand, you know, reason now. Okay, so if I know that this part comes from before and then I know before that there's another component, so that means at first, uh, at first for glass jar will have 47 more right then after that given it becomes 60 so that's why if you notice i am really a proponent or rather i really support kids like you all or parents who are watching to use model right and to use units use units when the model cannot cope with the big numbers if you notice i've already solved it right by in fact the answer is all found inside the model so in this case how many marbles are there in each container so glass you just need to take 60 plus 47 all right which is like i mentioned don't bother to use mental sum if you're not good at mental sum i know i'm good at mental sum but i just want to be sure that my final answer will give me one mark right so why not use the calculator right so 107 all right then the next one is 60 plus 13 all right 60 plus 13 so that is 73 now how do you check your answer total must be 180 so 107 plus 73 is indeed 180 right and then you can work backwards okay so if this 107 i give 47 do i get 60 yes and then if i give 47 to 73 do i get 120 yes all right so you write your statement at the end all right but you know paper 2 they will give you a blank to fill up you know like in this case paper 2 they will they will give you two blank for example like that okay and then they will tell you okay glass jar how many marbles in the glass Ja. and then how many marbles in the tin can correct so you just fill up right so in this case we know the answer already 107 for the glass jar 73 all right 73 for the tin can all right simple right okay so this is the unchanged total concept so if you notice when i'm trying to explain to you problems some strategies 
<coughs> I just want you to understand, okay? I just want you to understand by using an example which is not too easy, which is not too difficult because sometimes, you know, if I use the wrong uh, example, I'm not testing you on the problem sum strategy. In this case, I want you to fully understand the problem sum strategy. So in this case, if you notice, the both model before and after, okay? The before and after, the total is always 180. So this is the concept of unchanged total concept. So based on this understanding, that's the part where you manipulate the model. All right. So I hope you all understand the second concept. So now it's about 45 minutes into the session. So we are left with another 45 minutes, which I think we're going to end uh, quite quickly. So before I move on to the third concept and the third uh, example question, I want to let you know that tomorrow, which is a Saturday and Sunday, it's the Saturday solve and Sunday score. So you'll be able to download the practice papers, okay, to help you uh, to help you master these problem sum strategies. So to take you from beginning to advanced. So there will be about two to three questions in each concept in each concepts, and I will be giving you the worked out solutions. All right. So please go and download this, try them out on Saturday or Sunday. All right, and then go through the workout solutions. And that is how you do well in math. Right. You must know first. Really be crystal clear about what you need to know and then you practice. Keep on practicing and then you do well. I know some students who think, oh, all I need to do to do well for my math is just keep on doing practice. That wrong. Okay, you need to be focusing on mastery practice. You practice to master. But before you master, you must understand your concept. So when you can understand, you learn to understand. And then when you understand, you can apply. And then when you can apply, you master. Right, you master the problem sum strategies. All right, good. Now let's move on to the next concept. Okay, for those who want to take a break, you can take a break. All right, just make sure you take a break when you feel like your brain is like getting sleepy. Just take a break. You know, take a piece of candy, eat it, stretch yourself. You know, for one minute, not go and watch soccer or or uh, play. I don't know what do you all play nowadays. Little pony or 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 watch YouTube for half an hour. No. You know, just take a simple brain break, one minute, you know, every 20 minutes of studying or 30 minutes of learning, like right now, you know, I just completed about 30 minutes of teaching you how to do this. Take one minute of brain break, talk to your friend, depending on what you like. And then after that, have the self-discipline to come back and continue. All right. And then for every 90 minutes that you study or you learn something or you revise, go and take a bigger break, 15 minute break. You know, probably pay, play with your pets, go downstairs, kick your soccer ball or what do girls do nowadays? Bake a muffin in 15 minutes. I don't know what you all do nowadays. All right, so for every 90 minutes, take a 15 minute break, you know, but don't take too long because you will lose your momentum. All right, good. Now we're going to the third concept here in transfers concept, which is the unchanged difference concept. So as the name implies, unchanged difference concept here means there is one object, all right, there is one object where there's an external transfer that takes place but the difference between these two parties, between one party which transfer the thing to the other or the objects or the people remains the same. That means the difference between two objects or two party or two people remains unchanged. The difference, okay, the difference between both of them remains unchanged. So this is known as the unchanged difference concept. So this concept is normally used when the difference between two objects remains the same, like I mentioned to you, which includes also, okay, in this sample, uh, in this example, I'm not going to show you a question on ages. Alright, so typically even ages of two people, the difference remains the same. Alright, uh, even though ages got nothing to do with external transfers, right? Got nothing to do with external transfers, it's just somebody grow older. Alright, so in a way, mathematically, actually there is a transfer. That means the person's age actually increases. So an example that I could give you, uh, an example that I could give you in pertaining to age, you know, since I'm not going to touch age today but i just let you see the simple example let's say you know me and my son okay i am 39 years old this year my son is nine years old what is our difference i'm 39 my son is nine so there are 30 years difference now i ask you this question 30 years down the road will our difference still be the same yes our difference will still be the same i will still be 30 years older than him no matter how many years down the road you know, like for example, if 30 years later, I'll be 69, he will be 39. There's still a difference of 30. Now, if I work backwards, let's say now I want to talk about before. When he was born, he was 0 years old. I was 30 years old, right? So the difference is still 30. So this is what is being meant by, you can actually use this question for questions pertaining to ages. Because ages, and when you compare people, you know, 
uh, people with two ages, you will know that the difference do not change whether you are looking at the past or you're looking to the future by adding on more years, right? So in today's worked out example, I want to show you a external transfer question, meaning nothing to do with age, but just take note that unchanged different concept can also be applied for ages. And I'm very sure in your practice, you will have one question on this, right? So make sure you do the practice tomorrow, okay? Uh, if you do not know how to do it, you can download the answer key, the full work talk solution, and then you will be able to do well. All right. So like I mentioned again, I love for students to use models and units method because it is the best way to understand the problem and it is the easiest way to solve a problem pertaining to these kind of questions. All right. So as much as possible, always draw. Your brain loves it when you represent something which is so abstract. You know, the question when you are reading, they are just words. They don't mean anything. So when you convert those words into a picture in your head, okay, that's a good start. All right. Then the next start is to draw, to represent the problem into something that your brain can appreciate and see. Right. So normally people use a model. Okay. Normally we will use a model. All right. So for the subsequent session later on for the E-class, I'm going to touch on the heuristics of draw a diagram, uh, make a lease and draw a model. So these are the three different ways you can visually represent the problems. All right. So all these I will touch on later on in, in the E-classes further down the road. All right. Now let's take a look at the question. So again, for those who are just starting out with us, there's the Dr. Zamsky's checklist. So make sure you use the Dr. Zamsky's checklist to help you. Right, so assuming that you're using it, let's move on to the next question. Okay, so Elvin had three quarter. So Elvin had three quarter as much money as Betty at first. Right, so Elvin had three quarter as much money as Betty. Now again, this is the weakness. Okay, this is the common common weakness of students when they do fractions or they do ratio or they do something that has there, there is a comparison between one quantity and another quantity this is a problem the part and whole they do not know the part refer to where the whole refer to where so in this kind of comparison you're talking about Alvin having three quarter of what Betty has so that means Betty here is the one with the full whole which is four out of four so if Betty has four it means Alvin has three, as simple as that. And yet, till today, I have students who still cannot understand this. All right, so make sure you fully understand this, then we can move on. All right, so take note of part and whole approach and concept. That is the most important. All right, it's actually a very basic concept of fractions. Okay, so let's move on to the next sentence, the next given. After, right, that's after, that's first. So, you know, this is before, after. Alvin and Betty... Okay, after they each gave $250 to charity. Each of them gave $250 to charity. Right, so both of them initially had a certain difference in the amount of money, right? Right, because one had three quarter, the other one had four over four. So the difference was like probably one unit. All right, and then both gave $250 to the charity. So when somebody give away the same amount, of course the difference remains the same. So the difference between, of that, between both of them remains the same. So... That's why I told you it is very important for you to understand the problem sum strategy. So in this case, when you're reading this, it's not just about keywords. When you're reading this, you will understand that, ha, huh, this problem is the kind of problem which involves unchanged difference concept. All right, so that is the most important thing. It's not look out for trigger words. Sometimes there are no trigger words, right? You need to understand. All right, let's move on to the last sentence. So what happened after this? All right, Elvin had one third as much money as Betty. Right, so now Betty will have three parts out of three and Elvin only had one part and that is after. So now they tell you, find the sum of money Elvin had at first. So this is a very simple thing like I mentioned to you. So let's start with the before. Right. So this before, this is before, all right. So the before here, very simple. So you have Elvin, you have Betty, right. So Elvin in this case, uh, very simple, three units, okay. Okay, all right, let me just draw. Okay, Elvin has three units. All right, Elvin has three units, okay. And Betty has four units, right? 
that's what being stated there for all right so this part here don't be surprised that some students still do not know how to do it right so Alvin has three quarter as much as Betty right it makes sense okay now the next thing that you need to do okay is do the next one which is after okay let me just check what's wrong with my so-called digital right okay good now it's working again all right so this is before and then this is the difference right so the difference is here this is the difference okay one unit now after what happens after okay after is very simple one third right so one third remember the model in this case you are not sure how it decreased itself so you can estimate all right just put one and you must remember this unit okay this unit and this unit might not be the same size so that's why i advise you to use the units method because you cannot draw all models to scale all the time right so in this case you know this has to be a little bit smaller but it's okay because i'm not comparing this model to say that they are the same i just want to draw roughly so this model here before and after they are not of the same size and i'm not concerned because what I'm concerned about, to tell you the truth, is actually the difference. Because the difference will be the same, right? So this is the difference. And this is the difference. Right? So in this case, if you look at the difference, okay, let's assume now, when you are trying to use the units method and work backwards, you have to define which one you want to use as your unit. Okay, so let's say in this case, I want to say that this is one unit, all right? So this is one unit each. Right, so I need to work backwards and assign the units. All right, so what's the difference here? The difference here is two units. All right, so remember, unchanged difference concept means the difference do not change. So in this case, if this is two units, okay, taking reference from this model, okay, this unit model. So if this segment here, the difference is two units, it means A total have six units, right? and uh, six units at first and then now uh, Betty will have eight units right so after Alvin has one unit Betty has three units okay Betty has three units all right okay so as you can see the difference here is still two units right eight minus six three minus one is still two all right but the more important question here is from six to one and eight to three there's a decrease of five units right there's a change of five units okay so this change all right this change of five units is given here 250 dollars All right, so five unit is $250, so one unit, all right, is, all right, you can use mental sum or calculator, right? For me, I'm very sure 250 divided by five is 50, right? Okay, it's 50, so one unit is 50. So down here, they ask you, find the sum of money Elvin had at first. All right, so for some of you who do this, you might make careless mistake because when you look at the model A, there are three units, right? But that's not three units that's actually three parts of a model right so what we're looking out here is this part here six units so elvin at first has six units all right so that's why when you're doing unit modeling okay in this case when you're combining units with model you need to really be sure what is one unit and it need to be standardized all right so in this case i already told you i'm drawing the model just to guide me but they are not of equal sizes because it's not possible for me to draw equal sizes because i do not even know what is the size after they give that amount because I don't even know what's the amount so what's important here is the units all right so six units means three hundred dollars right three hundred dollars so how much money did Alvin have at first Alvin has three hundred dollars and you would have scored full marks okay had three hundred dollars at first okay 
So Alvin had three hundred dollars. Simple. You get your full marks. In this case, I think it's a four mark question. You have your four marks. And look, it's not that difficult. Number one. Why is this not difficult? Number one, I understand clearly. Okay. How do I understand clearly? I read carefully. Right. I read carefully. I understand clearly. Okay, I visualize, I draw to understand, and then I follow Dr. Zamki's checklist, I look out for the givens, I look out for the solution, I transfer all the givens. When you're drawing a model, you must transfer all the givens into your model. Alright? And then I work out, you know, how to do things, I understand the different heuristics before and after, I work backwards, you know, I draw the correct models and things like that. So that is why this is very easy. I can solve it. For most parents, I even have parents, if I give this question, they do not know how to solve. You do not know how to start. Alright, so that's why my advice to you is this. 50%, in fact, 70% of students who fail their math, guess why they fail their math? It's not because they are bad in math. They are bad in understanding questions. Okay, they don't even understand questions. So how do you understand questions? You understand questions by reading, annotating, and analyzing. Right, so you analyze, look at the thing, look, oh, you have Elvin, you have Betty, and how to guide you, how to make yourself become... Even better understanding, use brain-based understanding. Brain-based understanding means you visualize, you draw, you scribble down. So when you involve different parts of your body, you involve your eyes, you involve your hands. Okay, some of you can even whisper. You can even open up your mouth and say, Elvin had three colors, but don't make noise. Okay, especially when you're sitting for an exam, don't. So make it multisensorial. When you make it multisensorial, guess what? Your brain, your brain is activated fully. So when your brain is activated fully, guess what happens? You have the help of your entire brain to help you solve problems, right? So that is one of the very important strategy or methodology that we use here at Dr. Zam's Math and that is brain-based learning. Alright, so now, I'm very happy that uh, there are many of you right now who are joining us. So if you have questions, just post the questions later. I'll go through the questions, right? So now we are at the last fourth concept. So as you can see, these concepts are not difficult, but once you master these concepts and you know how to apply, you have, you will easily improve 10 marks, minimum 10 marks, right? So if you compare this, uh, if you use these problem sum strategies, combined with the problem sum strategies that I've covered with you in the last previous E-class, you would have already gotten 7 problem sum strategies under non-routine methods, right? So you can easily improve by 10 marks, up to 20 marks easily. For those who are already scoring 80%, you could have easily now go to A star, right? But of course, don't be overconfident, keep on practicing, you know, always use the calculator. Your calculator is your friend, use the calculator to help you, all right? So all this, you must take note, you know, doctors and golden rules and things like that. So I like to repeat myself because sometimes students forget, all right? So now we are finally going to the last transfers concept, which is called the change quantities concept. So the change quantities concept, when do you use it? Change quantities concept is one of the most hardest type of non-routine questions. Why? Because there are external transfers and the quantities all change and there's no relationship. Right? There's no particular way to identify any proportion or any relationship between the two objects. There's none. So typically, this kind of question, what we normally do is, again, we use models and units, right? So we'll use models and units, all right? So sometimes you just have to do more practice, you know, understand advanced model drawing or unit modeling, you know, different kind of strategies uh, whereby you can then apply to make it even easy for you, all right? So let's move on to the last final example to help you do well uh, by using the problem sum strategies. All right, okay, let's take a look again, okay? Read carefully, understand clearly. All right, uh, understand clearly. Visualize, draw to understand, annotate, read, analyze. All right, so let's do it. Okay, so Jana, Jana had one fifth as many pens as Eric at first. Right, so you know this is uh, going through a process. That means there's a step by step before after. So Jana had one fifth as many pens as Eric. So again, part and whole, right? So Jana have one, Eric will have five out of five. So Eric will have five units, for example, five parts of a model at first, right? Then their teacher gave Eric 12 more pens 
and Jana five more pens. So as you can see here, both changes, right? Both changes. Eric changes, Jana changes. There's no relationship. There's no other concept that you can use to help you, right? So this is the hardest, and there's no one fixed way to do it. But later I'll tell you some tips of how you're gonna solve this kind of problem. All right. So Eric had twelve more pens after, and Jana had five more pens after. All right. And then what happened? There's something to do with the ratio. So now the ratio of Eric spends to Jana spends now become four is to one. So this is Eric, this is Jana. So E is to J, four is to one. How many pens did Eric have at first? All right. So for this kind of question again, like I mentioned to you, this is a before after question. So again, just write before. All right. Very simple to understand, right? Before Jana had one and things like that. So what typically we will do here is actually very simple, right? Okay. So in this case, Jana and Eric. So Jana has one part of a model. And Eric will have how many parts? Eric will have five parts. All right. So this is actually very simple for those who are scoring you and below. I'm not surprised if you don't even know how to draw this model at this step. So you need to work hard and keep practicing. Okay. Do not give up. All right. Because some of you don't even understand. That's why you're scoring U or E. Right. So please keep on practicing this part so that you can understand. So Jana and Eric. Okay. One unit and five. All right. So that's before. Now. After what happens after? Okay, after what happened to Jana here? After their teacher gave Jana eight, uh, not eight, sorry, five, right? Gave Jana five, so you can actually draw and compare, right? So Jana is the same. I said that after now Jana has five, right? And then what happened to? Eric, okay, Eric now, okay, your new unit, okay, your new unit for this model now, this part here is 5, right, so this is one unit, right, so when you're assuming that this new unit here that you have, alright, so if I want to make things simple, I can say this is one U, right, this is one U, so this is how I define my unit, which one is my unit I'm referring to, so I will say all this is the one U, alright, so it means that this is also one U, plus 5, 1 U plus 5. So this is the new comparison. So in this case, the ratio is 4. So I need to draw 4 of such boxes. Okay, for Eric. So one of these will follow a 5, and one of these will follow a 5, and one of these will follow a 5. Alright, so as you can see, my model actually is not even drawn to scale. Because by right, Okay, by right, it needs to be longer than after before, but it's okay. Most important here is I'm using units. So when you use units, you focus on your units, right? So in this case, one unit, one unit, one unit. So let's take a look. So this is one part, right? One part. This is one, two, three, and four. Okay, good. So now what I'm going to do is this. Okay, so the after here, if you notice, the after here, Alright, you have, if you look down here, it increases by 5. This is very clear, we know. Right, it increases by 5. Right, okay. Now, for this part here, from this model to this model, it increases by 12. Right, it increases by 12. There's a change in 12. Okay, that means it increases by 12. So now, let's compare. This part here, alright, before there are 5 units. Right, after is... 1 unit, 2 unit, 3 unit, 4 unit. So after is 4 units plus 20. Right? It's plus 20. So that means here what happened here is now you need to ask yourself. These 5 units, it becomes 4 units plus 20. Right? So now let's make this. Let's break this 4 units plus 20 into the 12. Okay, plus 8. Because 12 plus 8 is 20. Right? So now, can you see that what happened here is, actually, there is an 8 here, which is actually 
if you notice there's a four unit here so when you compare when you compare and take a look at this okay if you take a look at this this is five units plus 12 you get this or you can compare it as four units plus 20 is the same thing so what it means here is one unit okay is actually can you guess is actually eight right one unit is actually eight all right so in this definition on this reference you are saying one unit is eight so as you can see this is the compare comparison you're comparing between these two right so you can easily solve this so how many pens did eric have at first eric has five units so just take five so if you notice this is actually a lot of mathematical reasoning right so eight times five is forty all right so how many pens did eric have at first eric has 40 pens okay eric has 40 pens all right so let me just repeat this part again for those who are not sure this is called comparing right so if you notice down here before there's five u right there's five u and then you add 12 so when you add 12 and when you add 12 what you get is using this model you actually get four times of what jana is so jana in this case one unit plus five right so there's four of it right as can be seen here so four of it is actually four unit plus 20 all right so five unit plus 12 is the same as four unit plus 20 all right so if i were to extract this out i will get four unit plus 12 plus one unit right so in this case is four unit plus 12 plus eight so it means this eight is actually the one unit all right so that's the part where i get one unit is eight so you need to check okay how do you check it's actually very simple you put it back in so you know this is eight this is 40 right so it's correct the ratio is correct so eight plus five is 13 so in this case after that it is 13 and then in this case if you notice uh, 13 so in this case if you notice you can take 4 4 times 8 is uh, 4 times 8 is 32 is 52 right so if you notice this is 52 so 1 is to 4 so this is how you check right so that's why they say these kind of questions are the hardest is they are the hardest but most important here is you need to understand concepts like transfer like remember this you know there's a transfer here right there's a transfer here and then after that there's there's another transfer here so that you need to understand so when you understand you use mathematical reasoning you analyze right like for example in this case this is about model drawing you know that if this is one unit you can assume that you assume that jana is one unit before and then after that just add five to become the new unit for the next model and then you just multiply by four all right so don't worry this is the hardest most harder this is the hardest kind of question you can get for transfers concept but with practice and understanding, you know, using mathematical reasoning, comparing, uh, you know, analyzing, uh, you use mathematical reasoning, you'll be able to solve as many problems as you can. So that's why the Dr. Zam math problem sum toolbox is very, 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 very important. All right. So well done. For those who have just joined us, don't worry. Uh, this is a preview class. Okay. This is a preview class. So you will be updated about all the preview classes. You have access to them. You just need to sign up for the newsletter or the e-classes uh, mailing list. All right. And then for those who are taking PSLE or not taking PSLE, let's say you're primary four, you can download for free. Okay. Just sign up for the newsletter. You can download the GWS Dr. Zanki's checklist booklet and Dr. Zan PSLE math mastery checklist because it's very important to have a checklist. So you know that you know everything. All right. So you can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can read my blog. You can take a look at YouTube videos. All right. So do take note. Use Dr. Zamki's checklist to help you. All right. Uh, again, I mentioned, please go to uh, my newsletter. You can download the booklet. So for those who have uh, who are interested to join me on my e-classes for PSLE math revision, I'm going to take you from now all the way to your PSLE, which is about 72 days from today. All right, you can join me. I'm going to see you two times a week, okay, on Wednesdays and Fridays from 5 to 6.30. And then after that, I'm going to give you practice worksheet. I'm going to take you all the way, right? I'm going to take every one of you from now all the way till your PSLE. I'm going to help you prepare for your PSLE math and do well. And guess what, okay? I'm going, I'm so confident that I can help you to improve 
I have this very special iron clad money back guarantee 100% money back guarantee if I cannot help you or your children to improve for your PSLE math I'll give you back all the money you can keep the materials right so no worry there's no risk because I'm so confident because like I mentioned to you if you know more about me you will know I've helped countless number of students in math countless students who are the top students who are at the bottom you know from last in class to first in class from last for math to topping math all right for even easy math foundation math or standard math somebody who score for example b you know within less than one month can score an a star for math uh students who go to top school students who are struggling with math who have never passed math since primary two or primary three and then scoring the almost the highest grade or scoring the highest grade okay so do not worry uh, it's very affordable if you're signing up for the psle math revision it is only 67 dollars per student if you buy the package it's only 67 dollars for 20 sessions so all these live classes okay the videos will be recorded you can download the worksheet you can go through and you can always ask me or you can always ask me any questions and i will help you for those who need uh face-to-face -face coaching right you need weekly coaching you need a human being to be there with you we actually work with our partner Qantas Learning. So Qantas Learning is very powerful. It makes use of our brain tools and also it offers personalized learning. So you can be sure that, you know, it's not the standard classroom teaching, right? So you can always go for Qantas Learning and then you can also sign up for PSLE Math Revision e-classes, which is only at $67 per student if you buy the package. If you don't buy the package, it is two times more expensive and there's even no money back guarantee so make sure you get the package at only 67 dollars and if you're taking emf you know anybody who's taking emf this year n level o level or o level n level amf go to my website drzam.com slash revision series 2018 all right registration is not open yet all right the price will not remain the same so make sure you are the first few to sign up okay it's very exclusive there's very few slots left for 67 dollars per student if you're taking EMF or AMF, guess what? It's only $97 per package, per student for the whole package. And each package, you have 20 sessions at least. All right. And on top of that, you have access to me. You have access to all the materials. And I guarantee that you will improve on money back guarantee. And for those who do extremely well or you improve, there are also prizes for you. All right. So I shall see you in the next E-class which is every Wednesday and Friday, which is going to be next Wednesday. So next Wednesday, we're going to touch on part three. Part three of Problem Sums Toolbox series, we're going to take a look at all the other non-routine methods. So after we are done with part three, we're going to take a look at part four, five to seven, whereby I'm going to touch back all the heuristics. Okay, heuristics uh, will take about four sessions. And then just before heuristics, uh, just before we go for your prelims, Okay, for those who are taking uh, PSLE this year, you have printed. For those who are primary 5, no problem. You can still cover all these topics with me. For those who are primary 6, uh, you'll be taking your prelims very soon. Alright, so what's going to happen here is I want to focus on problem sums first. Uh, because most of the time, in fact, to tell you the truth, to tell you the truth, the reason why you're not improving 80% of the time. In fact, I can, I can safely say 100% of the time is problem solving. Alright, so if you notice, the way I structure the E-classes schedule is... I begin with the what matters most because you are preparing your PSL in less than 72 days, right? 72 days. So you need the fastest way, the most effective way to help you and that's why we have the E-classes, right? So just tell yourself you're going to have the self-discipline, you'll be motivated and for your information, if you're still not convinced, go to drzam.com and find out more about me, all right? Uh, my, uh, my, when I am the coach myself, okay, our success rates are like almost 100%. Right, it's almost 100%. I can help every student. So make sure you join us. If you're still not convinced, do search me on Google. Do your own research. Look at the sample materials. All right, if you spot any mistakes that I make, let me know. All right, so I try my best not to make any mistakes. But if I do make mistakes because I'm a human being for your information, I will definitely help you out with it. All right, so please go to drzam.com slash revision series 2018. Sign up now. All right, but to tell you the truth, the revision, uh, the link is not up yet because I want you all to go through the previews. And there are many goodies, right? For those who want to learn about percentages, those who want to download the previous problem, some strategies, feel free to download because the first two classes, are preview classes are free of charge. All right, and it's only $67, right? And you can improve so much. I know some tuition classes are so expensive, right? 
this is only $67 you get materials to print out you get videos and everything so it is a deal and it's an offer that you cannot miss alright $67 and risk free money back guarantee there is nothing to lose it is all yours like I mentioned earlier on in previous videos I'm doing this to help as many students as possible that's why we're doing e-classes Alright, so I shall see you again for those who are taking EMF or know who are taking EMF, those who have signed up for the EMF revision program. I will see you at 8 p.m. today live on the webinar if you're part of the VIP webinar. If not, I'll see you stream live on Facebook and YouTube because we're going live with all the free preview e-classes. Alright, so take care. See you again. Have a nice day.